just do a few minutes. This is pretty straightforward. It seems like uh, seems like your niche, Dave, is about five hundred to a thousand hits per per thing. I, I foolishly clicked the start button, Dave, and then didn't have an intro ready. So I may cut that out or may not. Anyway, welcome back to Q&A with Professor Dave Barry. Uh, I titled this Women Watch Sports. And then uh, the actual title of your, your weekly piece was Think Women Don't Know Sports. You Don't Know As Much About Sports As You Think. So as always, we're on with Professor Dave Barry, uh, sports economist at Southern Utah University on Twitter as Wages of Wind. Say hey, Dave. Hey. And yeah, we, we are going to discuss, uh, you know, as we mentioned, every week we come on, we discuss your weekly, uh, we were hoping for two pieces, but you said that didn't happen last week, but at your oh. piece or two pieces at Forbes, you write over at Forbes, forbes.com forward slash sites forward slash David Berry. Uh, and yeah, if we have any questions from you in the comments, we answer them. If I have any questions, we answer them and we, we just do this once a week. If this is your first Q and a podcast, and as we noted your podcast or your piece, not your podcast, your piece last week was about uh, women watching sports, and this was spurred by uh, Cam Newton. So I'll actually let you just just break down the, the crux of the story, Dave, because I thought you did a good job. All right. So th this, so really what, I, what we've sort of done the last few weeks is this is sort of me telling you the story of how I wrote the piece, basically. Um, and so this one this one evolved as I wrote it. I, I, I wrote a draft of it um, probably Saturday or Sunday. And then as I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it, that sort of evolved. Uh, the original draft, I wrote a piece on the Wages of Wins Journal about seven, eight years ago on, the, on an episode of the Bob Newhart Show. And I'm going to send you the episode and the link to this. But it was about the Duke of Dunk. And so the, the, the essence of this episode was that there was this fictional player in Chicago on a fictional basketball team. And he's a huge scorer, but his coach wants him to go see a psychiatrist because he won't share the ball. And in the episode at the beginning, there the two men in the story, Bob and Jerry, are spending a lot of time talking how great this player is because he scores so many points. And then Carol, the receptionist, goes on and says, well, that's not what wins basketball games. You win basketball games when you play as a team. And she uses an example, the Boston Celtics from the 1960s, and she proceeded to list all the players on the six, on the Celtics who made winning possible. And I wrote about this seven or eight years ago because it was talking about Red Auerbach and the Celtics' way they did things, and it's a very wages of wins kind of story. But I thought about this piece again because the punchline of the bit was when she gets done explaining in detail why the Celtics win, Bob looks at her and says, you see, I told you women don't understand sports. And so I thought, when I was thinking about Cam Newton's comment, that that very much is exactly what was said in 1976. That Cam Newton is telling this woman, you don't understand football routes. Well, how can a woman understand this? And I thought, this is something that you said in 1976. And I thought, well, why would you say this in 1976? And you said it in 1976 because in 1976, Title IX had just passed in 1972. Women didn't play sports very much uh, prior to Title IX. And so when Bob Newhart was growing up in the 40s and 50s, I'm sure he did not experience many women who were playing sports or talked about sports because women just didn't have the opportunity to do that. And so for him, this would have been funny. But in 2017, women have now been playing sports for 45 years. I mean, this has been going on for a very, very long time. In Cam Newton's world, Millions of women play sports. So I went through the I went through the book in, in this article and I detailed all the numbers. So millions of women play sports in high school, hundreds of thousands play in college. We have professional sports leagues. There are at least 60 million women who say they are sports fans in just the United States. So women today watch a lot of sports and they talk about sports and they play sports. But the problem is when they talk about sports around men, they don't get to do that. Men shut them down very quickly. I mentioned that this was interesting. Uh, I, I believe back at the Ladies League, uh, there was a great post. I, what was it? Molly Abbott who wrote it? And I, Molly, and you, Molly Cosby. Molly Cosby. Uh, Monica Abbott plays for the. For oh, the <laughs> Molly Cosby wrote the piece. Yes. Molly Cosby wrote a great piece about women getting quizzed in sports. Yes. Uh, 
how annoying that is. And, and I, I've got two follow ups to that. But but one that was interesting is I went to a, a Packers game a few weeks ago uh, with a friend. Uh, and football is not even my my number one sport. Uh, you you know basketball. You and I can talk forever. Football. I, I like a few teams: Packers, Broncos. I, I'm a nerd, so I look up stats and stuff. But I'm I'm not like a huge fan of history. But I was I was commenting to my friend at the game about some innocuous stat because, as as mentioned, I'm a nerd and I like it. And he just kind of stared at me and said, "Oh, I I don't really know that team." He's like, "I really only know the Packers." And then later, I made a comment about the Packers, and it wasn't you know it wasn't a, a major player historic. Is like, I don't really know who that is. So I was like, "Oh, you're you're a fan of the Packers. You're a huge fan of the Packers, um, but you you don't really know too much about football, and you don't really know too much." Uh, about Packers history, which which isn't a problem. I mean, you know, football to me is a very daunting sport to learn because there are, what, 300 people on a team at any given time, right, Dave? The roster is huge. All, they're all wearing helmets. The stats are, are hard to track. You've told me, the the expert of stats has told me they don't matter. Um, yeah, same so, so I've given up a long time ago. But, but you know, I, I wasn't trying to give the friend a quiz is the point. But the point is he, he failed it very quickly. Uh but no one would ever question his Packer fandom. No one, and, you know, I, I, I no. Just, he's never received a quiz, which was was your point. Whereas, it that that same level of of fandom is not allowed in women in sports. No, no, it, it is not. And and this is and Molly Cosby's story is 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 not unique. You know, women have been saying this. Uh, lots of women have been saying this, including a lot of women sports writers. They say this all the time when people learn their sports writers. So in the piece, I note the quote from Sam Ponder, who works at ESPN, that she hosts a show on the NFL. And she says people ask her if she likes football, which is just a totally bizarre question. You wouldn't ask Chris Berman that. You know, you host a, a show on football. Do you like football? No, I don't like football. I don't even know why I'm doing this. <laughs> So, you know, Kavitha Davidson says the same thing. She gets asked about whether she knows basic things about sports, even though it's her job to cover sports. So women face these quizzes all the time, and it's because men don't want to let them into the space. They want to, they, they don't like the fact that women are doing this. Uh, and so, so that was the point of the, of, of the article is to just to highlight how many women are actually involved in sports, like sports. Uh, and I think this is something that men don't quite, appreciate or understand because they don't spend a lot of time talking to women about sports and and it's understandable why they don't do this because clearly if every time you tell someone that you're a fan of something they give you a quiz i think you learn to stop telling people you're a fan of something i think that would be your reaction to that because that's got to be annoying after a while yeah it's not it's not good at all and actually I, I recall i can't get the link up in front of me quickly but i know someone actually gave cam newton a quiz they said you know this person has been reporting on you for years they, they've talked to you many times do you know their name and he said no so yeah yeah actually the, the woman who the woman who was the, who he was talking to actually said that to him do you even know who i am and he said no i don't and then this is you know well there were, there were some interesting reactions to cam newton's uh comment one of them was from um a woman at the Washington Post, where she went through and she did this. It was a very, very funny but very insulting article on Cam Newton, talking about Cam Newton's many deficiencies as a quarterback, and pointing out that you ask whether she knows about routes. We've watched you play quarterback. We're not sure you know about routes. Are you aware that they're running routes? <laughs> so when you drop back, do you know that they're following a pattern? <laughs> <laughs> they're going in a direction for a reason. They're not wandering around in circles. Well, so I did actually want to just really compliment this because I've done this a few times now and it seems like it's going to be a running theme every week where I, I compliment something about the piece. But I did like that your retort to Cam Newton wasn't, this is wrong. I mean, I saw a lot of that and I like it. And And one kind of issue I've had a lot in sports is we've learned that sexism is wrong. That's pretty obvious. And you see a lot of mainstream, this is wrong, very, you know, just coming up in arms. And what I liked is your retort was was not to just say he's wrong. It's to say, look, here are the numbers. To, to have such an idea is is silly. It, it, do, it doesn't make any sense. It, it doesn't really match any reality you would see. In fact, you know, one, I'll give an embarrassing story about myself that's in a, a similar vein. Uh, my dad was a judge when I was younger. Um, I was walking around with him when I was a, a little kid. Uh, and he he met, you know, judges don't wear their robes out in public. So he he ran into a friend who was a, a former, was not a former, was a fellow judge. And it was a female. And when when he introduced me to her, I, I made the comment, I didn't know women could be judges. And, you know, he, this was this good news for me is I was very young. So my dad very quickly was embarrassed, said no. And then later talked to me and said, of course they can. That's wrong thinking, et cetera, et cetera. The defense I'll give 
is, and I was even able to do this. I, uh, my dad has a photo of him with a bu bunch of other judges. I went and looked and there was like, you know, the, the one single female in the, the sea. And that, that, that's a problem in lots of fields. I'm a tech guy, you know, that that's a major problem. So sadly, I will say the good news is I had good parents who taught me, don't think that way, get that out of your head really young, which I did. And then I'll say, I was just doing the observation of, I'm a young kid, I'm counting, and I don't see, it. When of, of all the people I've met that you said are judges, I don't see women. So that's sad on two fronts, to be honest, right? Um, but to your point on like Cam Newton and all these stats, if you're a football player and you go in the stands and you look around, you know to the numbers, right? It's it's you know almost fifty yeah. percent at at this point. Uh, if you even even in the, the the conferences, as we noted, there are female sports reporters talking to them. I think many I, I've seen tons of you know sideline reporters who are female. So it's not as if Cam Newton, and I'm not even defending what I said. I'm very embarrassed by that story. It's not even like Cam Newton could take the note I did, and the same note you gave about Bob Newhart in the '70s. You can't take the note, I haven't noticed any women around here, so this is funny in a quaint, we still need to correct your thinking kind of way. It's the, have your eyes even been open, Cam? Seriously. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's just no excuse anymore for someone to say this because it, it should be the case that if you go to a sporting event, you notice there's lots of women at the sporting event. Um, so, you know, this is, this is you know, a, a, a real problem. And, and, I think it gets back to the fact that men just don't spend a lot of time talking to women um, and 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 trying to understand what they that they actually like sports and that they're interested in this. Uh, and so that's it, it gets at, at a lot of bigger issues than just Cam Newton's comments. So it's you know I, I think I think it's a, it's an important story. I I I I I, I do want I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the link to the Bob Newhart piece. I I really think that. That was where I started. When I wrote the piece, though, after I had like three paragraphs in there about Bob Newhart, it occurred to me that maybe that's just taking the piece and I'm the only one who's going to really I, I, I was going to make a comment, actually. I found it. That's the, the wonder of Google. Uh, so yes. if people are watching my eyes at the beginning of the show. They'll notice I was doing this. And it's because I actually, I, I typed. Yeah, uh, you can find Duke of Dunk. You just type it in and it'll show up the episode. Yeah. Well, I, but I'm saying I typed, uh, for, for those of you that are geeks and don't know you can do this, if you're on um, if you're using Google to search, you can type sites colon and then put it in and it'll restrict it to just that site. And then you said Duke of Dunk and Bob Newhart. And I was like, there can only be so many pieces Dave has written with those two things. And I think there was only one that popped up. Yeah. I reading and I, what I actually noticed, I started reading. I was like, he has spent a few paragraphs talking about this Bob Newhart show. I, when's he going to get to the, the story about, I think it was Danny Granger at the time. Danny Granger. In the Indiana Pacers. Um, but yeah, so, so I much preferred this to that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I I'm a big fan of 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 sitcoms from the '70s and '80s. So so I know a lot about those particular TV shows. And so, but it is a case that I don't think most people. I I notice this with my students, of course. All that stuff is way before they were born, so they don't have any they don't have any reference at all to these things. To them, Bob Newhart is the old guy who shows up in the Big Bang Theory. That is. Oh, we could talk Big Bang, but I'll I'll leave that off the table for today. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know, but so that eventually, what it, what it, what it, as the piece evolved, it came down to, you know, there's basically two things that women get to do when it comes to sports. They they do get to play because the court said they have to. You have to let them play, and um, they do get to be fans, and they do, and as part of that, they get to spend money on these things. Women spend a lot of money on sports, but it is the case that we still haven't got to a point where women can just talk about sports. And, and men have a hard time letting women do this. And this is, you know, this is a point also made in the piece is that of all the things that women talk about in the media, they are least likely to talk about sports. Only 11% of stories that are filed by reporters on sports are written by women. Uh, and you don't see women as analysts. Typically, you know, Sam Ponder's role in that show is she's the host of the show. So they didn't hire her to do the analysis. Uh, it's men who do the analysis. And so we haven't gotten to a point where women can sit down and say, let me tell you what's happening here. I'm going to analyze this for you. Um, and so that's, we just don't have a lot of examples of that. Sorry, Scott, that, that is the autoplay ad on your piece, Dave. And uh, one and I'll have to figure something out. I think I can turn off Chrome from doing that. But uh, my mic and and uh, headphones go through the same outlet so I can hear the sound normalized. So autoplay ads are a little obnoxious, and unfortunately Forbes does do them. But that's how they're able to afford to pay people. That's true. 
that's true. Um, so, so that's so that's so that's you know, I, I again, I I think this is you know this is something the whole you know, and going back to that piece by by Molly Cosby, that was on a website called the Ladies League, and so this is an idea that I've had, uh, and that Molly had. So Molly and I were working on this, uh, is building a website where women get to talk about sports, and so uh, we're still working on that. Um, so Ladies League, well, we had it in operation for about a year or so, uh, and. I, I really like a lot of what what it was written there. A lot of women contributed to that. There's a lot of good stories on there, um, and so we're working on trying to build a website where, you know, the women's sports data is there. Women can write about sports. Women get paid to write about sports. So we're we're working on doing this. So hopefully in the next few months something like that will be relaunched, and um, and so there'll be a place where women can you know talk consistently about sports and and be allowed to say whatever they want to say. And uh, I'll give one last note. It's funny because you, you were noting men get hired to be analysis and the same point, this, this stupid quiz thing. Uh, I got a weird basketball related thing. I, I just made a flippant comment uh, about the uh, plus minus variant of statistics. I noted that uh, BPM is supposed to explain RPM. This is going to be so boring to people, but you're, you're here for a Q&A with a professor. BPM is supposed to explain RPM and VORP, if you look at basketball reference, is just BPM minus two, essentially, if you, if you look at how it breaks down. So I said, if, if you're someone who's, you know, people like to do this game of rattling off as many advanced statistics as they can, right? Carmelo Anthony's BPM, wind shares, winds produced, whatever is, is this. Um, they probably wouldn't use winds produced, but whatever. And so I just noted, if, if you're using these three stats, you're not using multiple advanced stats. You're, you're pretty much using the same one. And I got about 15, 20 replies on Twitter. A bunch of people were saying, yeah, but you know, but, and as they started explaining, I said, none of these things are true to many of them. So some people said, doesn't R RPM include BPM? And I was like, no, that's the exact opposite of what happens. And some people said, yeah, I agree. You should look at RAPM and RPM. And I said, they're the, the same statistic, you know, so all these, these weird things. And I basically, it's the same point. I didn't explicitly give a quiz, but I made a comment that resulted as if it were a quiz to many people on on Twitter that proclaimed to be basketball fans and follow me or see my tweets because they, they like basketball and advanced stats. And I could just say they failed. So it, it just as a, a kind of cap. Yeah, and, and just the interesting thing about that is, is it is it is a case that men will ask questions of each other, but they don't completely shut each other down. Well, I think it can be interesting. Really it can be, I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm talking to you. You know, I've noticed you. You have to have noticed that, too. The Bob Newhart show is a great example of this. Uh, where you've got two people that don't understand the stats or don't understand the numbers or don't understand even just the underlying rules of basketball kind of being Furbies to each other back and forth, back and forth. And if, if you actually analyze them, you're like, neither of you is, is making sense. You know, when you listen. No, to it, and it, it's true. This is this. There was another piece that Molly Cosby wrote about how um, people fake sports knowledge. And and. Uh, and this is something that's really common is that men will often fake that they know things that they don't know. Uh, one of my favorite stories is I was at a baseball game with a fellow uh, sports economist, Rob Simmons, and we're sitting there at a Giants game. And the guy behind us is explaining what's going on in the field to his girlfriend, wife, whoever this is that's with him. And we're sitting in front of him. and Everything he's saying is wrong. And he just keeps going on and on and on about this. You're like, none of what you're saying is actually what's happening here. And it did, you know, it, it didn't make any difference to him that he was wrong. <laughs> he had no idea he was wrong. And so Rob and I are just giggling about this. You know, we don't want to turn around and embarrass the guy and say, nothing you're saying is right. You're not even close. <laughs> that is not what's happening. <laughs> but he was very emphatic about it. And the same thing happens in the stats community. Uh, you see this. You and I both have had this experience where people have actually tried to explain stats to the two of us, and we know stats, and they're totally wrong. And you're like, "Why are you doing? It? Why are you having this conversation? You know nothing about this subject. Be quiet." Yeah, like I, as I mentioned, it's it wasn't. I, I mean, maybe maybe the actual alternative is to go the other route, which is to start giving men quizzes on. You know, they they start talking sports, and you know, excuse me, uh, can you name at least four? And I, I think I'd fail this quiz. Uh, star. I was going to say the quiz could be something like name four. Uh, Packers quarterbacks. Uh, I, I think I think a better quiz they're going to talk about stats is just tell me what you think the formula is. <laughs> what, what do you think this is? All I'm noting is many people that you know. I, I notice this too when you go to games. Uh, people wear t-shirts, and I'm the same way. This it, it's very expensive to buy a new gear or to constantly update your gear because there's a lot of turnover on sports. Yes. So lots of people you go to a Packers game and they're going to be wearing a Brett Favre shirt. 
or, you know, and I'm a big hockey yeah. fan or was a big hockey fan before the lockout. And, you know, you'd go to the Avalanche game and uh, Peter Forsberg, Joe Sackick, Patrick Waugh, those are huge. Those guys have not been relevant. You made me so sad, Dave, when you said eight years ago piece and I looked it up and that's 2009. So, yeah, the, the Avalanche haven't been relevant since, you know, the early 2000s, which is, you know, old enough to drink at this point almost. So just just the point being, you, you go to sports games and you notice that. So it's like many people, you know, are casual fans of this. They 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 went and bought a yes, $50 absolutely. off the clearance rack and are going to maybe one game a year and they aren't keeping up with the stats. They aren't keeping up in the trivia. They couldn't name more than a couple people on the roster. Uh, and yet they'll that so very true. That, that, and, and that's something you notice when you when you delve into the minutia of sports as people who do stats do. Uh you know, both of you and I, I'm sure, had this experience where we think what we're finding is terrifically interesting that you discover, like, Carmelo Anthony's really not that productive or whatever. And you find that most fans do not care about any of this stuff. It's not relevant to them in the slightest. It, and, and, in fact, I get the sense that you telling them this kind of ruins it for them. It's like I don't – and I actually wrote a piece on that once. Yeah, it's no good to have a stats person around – because you want to have a discussion about LeBron James versus Carmelo Anthony, and I just show up and say, it's LeBron, that's the end of the conversation, there's no point in talking anymore. Um, so I'm surprised about the Packers that, you have, that you're surviving Aaron Rodgers being hurt today. I, I didn't want to bring any of that up. I was actually, you, it, it took some wind out of my sails, because what I was going to start this podcast with, I had this like written down to myself, I was going to comment to you about uh, Verlander uh, pitching really well in the playoffs, and how as a, as a you know, uh, Tigers fan, you had to be excited about that. Uh, and then yeah, I got I'm not really excited about it, but it is a case that, you know, I, 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 I'm, a, I, I'm happy he's doing well and I'm especially happy he's doing well against the Yankees because I hate the Yankees. So, so this is working out on two different levels. And then I was going to insult the, uh, then I was actually going to insult the lions because the lions are going today. And despite the fact that Drew Brees is playing horribly they're they're getting shellacked by, by the, oh, yeah, lions are getting slaughtered today. But the, I, I sent out a tweet before the game started. The lions were going to get killed today because lions don't have any offensive linemen left. Um, Lions, Lions, the only goal the Lions should have had today is come out of the game with Stafford healthy enough to play in two weeks, which is not what happened with the Packers. So, so <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I was going to leave the start of the show was going to be me taking two digs at your sports teams. And I saw the Rogers news and it, it completely fell out of my head. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers is, uh, is, is done. Uh, so the Packers, I, I assume they're losing. I, I haven't looked recently. They were, they were up when I last checked, but it wasn't close. And the, the annoying stat that they, that we were pointing out was the last time Aaron Rodgers did this, they went like two, seven and one. So yes, this is not a good thing for them. So this is, this is, looks, looks pretty bleak. So, um, yeah, the Vikings are up by 13. What? Oh, wow. That that turned around real. Yeah, so the Vikings are going to win. Lions are down by 21. Um, so Lions are done. But Ly Lions, I, I would expect Lions in the fourth quarter will probably score a couple of touchdowns and make this close. Um, so it'll look respectable at the end. Um, and uh, and so, but the Lions will be 3-3 three and three after this. Vikings and Packers will be 4-2. and two, But the Packers don't have Aaron Rodgers. And Lions already beat the Vikings. So there you go. And the Lions' schedule gets a lot easier after the bye because they have a bye next week. So, uh, and their offensive lineman comes back. So, uh, I'm not actually on. Again, the only goal I have for Detroit today is Stafford. Just don't get hurt. I mean, if I were the coach of Lions right now, I would just yank Stafford and just say the game. They're not, they're not going to win today. There's no point in playing him. He's just going to get hurt. The backup probably needs a little experience, anyways. You play the fourth quarter. Just. I, I I've noted, by the way, the funny note. Uh, this is way too much of a tangent, so I'll, I'll let this be the capper, then ask about next week's piece. But I've noted that baseball and hockey are interesting, where these are two sports where if, if an important player is doing well or, or poorly or it's just an off game, they'll pull the goalie or the pitcher. You'll just say, hey, yes. and to your point there, I've seen several times where you know the pitcher throws the ball and the, the pitching coach comes out and is like, your your arm looks a little weird there. They haven't thrown a couple. And they're like, no, you're done. We, we're, we're shutting you down. So I, I, I have – on a few occasions lamented that basketball and possibly football, I don't know football as well, could do from that where it's like, you know what, just take the, it, it, it's in our best interest. It's in your best interest to just take the day off. Uh, so anyway, we, we went pretty, we went like 25 minutes on that, which is pretty good, Dave. So what is your piece or your pieces next week uh, for four? I go off to do two pieces again. I have to, I have to do five pieces a month. So one week there has to be two. And I think this will be the week I'll try two. Uh, today I'm going to write about a sort of an NBA preview because the NBA season starts. So I'm going to talk about the NBA lottery, 
and I'm going to explain. And the, we, uh, this story's been told before at the Wages of Wins. Devin Dingham has written about this, and I've written about this. Uh, is is lottery teams repeat a lot? They just keep coming back. They never go away. Um, and so I'm going to point out once again how often NBA lottery teams just keep coming back and keep coming back, and you, there's the lottery does not do much for you. And I assume your phrasing will be so, since it's the start of the season, something like, um, you know. If you're excited about your team this upcoming season, if they didn't make the playoffs last year, I wouldn't be here. That's a really long title. Something better. Yeah, than I, 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 I have a shorter version of that. <laughs> yes, I'm going to kill kill the joy of all the people who are rooting for the losers. Uh, and then uh, on that. Thursday, my goal is to um, uh, USA Softball announced the uh, women who are going to be trying out for the team, and they have a long list of women. Uh, a lot of these women have played in the National Pro Fast Pitch League. Uh, some of the women are playing college. I have stats on both of them. So I'm going to do what is called, what I'm calling a statistical tryout. If you were basing it just on the stats, what would this team look like? Um, now, as it is, they have Monica Abbott, so so she's going to pitch, so that means they win. But nevertheless, somebody else is going to play. <laughs> <laughs> so who else should be playing? I was going to make some joke like you can't pitch every game, but the 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 great one of your great articles, the million dollar arm, which was one of your earlier ones at Forbes. So yeah, definitely check out Dave's backlog at Forbes if you haven't. There, there's some great pieces, and a good piece of news is they they're not too topical. Like they're not they don't disappear after a week. That's even like the good news. Like the Cam Newton piece, you know, if you if you tweet about Cam Newton a week after the fact without a different hook, that that just evaporates into the mist of of sports news. So. But yeah, so you know, Monica Abbott did pitch. I think what two games in a row in, in yeah. the finals and pitched incredibly. Yeah, women, well. women softball pitchers can do that. Now they can't pitch every game, but they can pitch a lot of games, and uh, more than men can. I, I and I, I I don't know the mechanics of it all, but apparently throwing the ball the way they do is not quite the stress on the arm as throwing overhand the way baseball pitchers do. Yeah. Uh, and so they're able to keep throwing a lot longer, uh, and. Um, and so, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through this data and I'm going to, I'm going to do what I'm calling a statistical trial. What does this team look like? And the thing about it is that women's softball, when it's in the, when the Olympics or in the world cup or whatever, this is something that gets a lot of attention because people know who to root for then. Uh, and so I'm going to say, Hey, we have, we have all this data from, from national pro fast pitch that you may not have seen. Let me tell you what this is saying. All right. Well, that sounds good. If you have questions for Dave, uh, you can leave them in the comment section at YouTube. You can leave them at boxscoregeeks.com. Uh, you can tweet them at Dave, and then if Dave remembers them, he can bring them on air. Uh, thanks again for being on, Dave. Wages of Wins on Twitter, Forbes.com forward slash sites, David Berry, and we'll talk to you next time. All right.